I'm rambling. Sorry. I was talking about my father, and it's kind of... I don't know. I don't feel comfortable uh, admitting that I hated him. Because uh, I sure don't hate him at all now. Uh, I don't even want to hate who he used to be. Because, I mean, the man he was, so I didn't know him. He didn't tell me about his time in Vietnam and his Purple Heart and uh, and all the baggage he was carrying around. How he left home early to get away from his family because his father was an alcoholic and uh, abusive, it physically and mentally. The grand, you know, the grandfather I knew, you know, my father's father, was a sweet old guy who uh, had found Mormonism. <laughs> He got rid of his Baptist uh, because he could be a drunk and everything and be a Baptist. But as a Mormon, no, they were checking his house. He can't even have coffee. Uh, and he loved it. And my father had this resentment. And they didn't really stay in touch. He never did. I don't think he ever got to tell his dad, I forgive you. And maybe there was a reason for that. But... I know that the man that my father is today is not the same guy he used to be. And um, the man he is today is the man I love. The man I call my father. The man I grew up under was a son of a bitch. And I don't want to become a son of a bitch. Maybe that's why I've avoided being a father. Of course, when you meet nothing but religious women, uh, you don't get to stay long enough anyway. <laughs> and it, they sure don't want to have a kid with you. Uh, they might want to have some fun with you for a while, but, you know, if you don't want to accept Jesus or whatever they're into, you know, you're out of here. <laughs> and, uh, I don't know, maybe it's good. I, I'm i 50 years old. My dad was in his early to mid-20s when he, you know, when I came into the world. and And he was still in the Navy, and... And he was carrying around secrets that he couldn't share. You know, incidents he'd had, uh, people he'd killed. And the fact that someone spit on him and called him a baby killer. And he wept when he told me this. They used to travel uh, up the rivers. Uh, like in Apocalypse Now, except without all the psychedelics. And... They had to they had to uh, board junks and search, and if somebody ran, they had to uh, shell them. And he said that's that happened, you know, on his watch. And he was the skipper, you know. Uh, he said he saw women and children floating in the water past their boat, and he didn't know. I mean, did they run because they were afraid? Did they run because they had a reason to run, uh, like they were smuggling or? BC or whatever, uh, I have no idea what that's like. I, when I found out how much pain my father was carrying around, I had to do all I can to get rid of anything connected to me. So we forgave, we forgave each other. And yes, the pain is still there, but it's like an amputated wound. I mean, it's an amputated limb. Uh, there's no reason for that pain except that it just lingers on. And we can't undo what's been done. We can only move forward and drop unnecessary baggage whenever possible. I think this probably is running a little long, so I'll stop here. Uh, thanks for sticking around this long. Okay, bye.